I have drop shop, property of cable TV. Uh oh. <laughs> property of cable TV company. Do not remove. Oops. <laughs> Hello there, who is in the mood for some retro goodness? Sorry for the view, but this is really a, only a appropriate angle, I think. Uh, it's just everything else, there's no room anywhere. Plus, this chair is the very chair that this uh, old black and white television used to be sitting on uh, back in the day. This is a General Electric uh, television. Apparently with a model number of XB3160BK and a chassis of 15XB. Now I did actually look up this TV a little bit. I couldn't find a damn, I couldn't find a single picture of this television. Uh, you know, nothing. Couldn't find a damn thing. I would love to tell you a little bit more about it, but I can't. I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's from the 70s. My dad used to have this actually hooked up to the Commodore 64, uh, believe it or not. We've got some pictures. I'm going to show you some pictures of that. I think my sister is in it. Uh, this is, I don't know, I, get, I don't know, this used to be, I, don't, I think this used to be called like a portable television, really, because, you know, uh, if you look here, it has a little handle for it, so we can uh, pick it up. So, uh, yeah, this is portable, I guess. <laughs> And it has an antenna, which uh, I'm pretty sure I was the one that broke that off. I had a habit as a kid of uh, playing with antennas, and they always uh, this 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 is this would be all that was left of them because I would always uh, end up destroying. It. <laughs> but it would do us no good today, anyway, because the analog signals are no more. They have been sold to the highest bidder by the government. You don't you don't do that you let that happen naturally if it is gonna happen a bit of an issue to get these all converted to modern uh, technology to get actual signals from today onto these televisions uh, but but it can be done and it's gonna be done right here because I've seen other people do this very ugly and that they'll I don't, I don't know how they research this stuff, but they end up getting like 1080p. Uh, they end up converting like 1080p kind of signals, 16 by 9, squishing it onto the 4 by 3 televisions. They look awful. That is not what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it the way this stuff is meant to be done, showing you the right way to do it. We're actually going to turn it on now, uh, see how long it takes to actually... Uh, uh, boot up here. I think that's the on switch. There it goes. I don't know. You're gonna see it uh, turn on. I don't think the television. I don't think I got the other stuff on. <laughs> here at US there we go. Jagger Eaton in the bronze medal position with that 88. An 89! He does. Now let's turn it off again and uh, just see how long it takes kind of to power it up. It's going to be faster this time because uh, it's already been powered up, but uh, it should still take it a little second. It takes it a little while to actually get going. <laughs> just got bumped out of a medal! What can he do on his final run? It sounds like we're doing some kind of sports event. I can't actually see what you guys are seeing right now. It's, it's, it's all for art, I guess. <laughs> it sounds like something that's not going to be struck for copyright, though, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> but the angle has been changed because I kind of need to see what's going on and to commentate properly. So, yes, uh, this is some kind of X game thing going on. Uh, we will show you that it's not a VCR or something. We'll change the channel. As you can see, it kind of works. <laughs> oh, we got Kingpin on. That's nice. 
That would definitely be uh, struck for copyright, though, so we got to go somewhere else. <laughs> As you will see, there's a lot of, like, little interference going on here. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know if that's a television or if it's just, you know, some part of the conversion process if it's a wire or if it's the actual, you know, uh, converter putting this back into RF or something. I'm not sure. Your public television. That's that's got to be safe for YouTube, right? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we got some controls here. This is how we, here's the volume switch. We have a switch in the middle here, which seems to be a contrast kind of switch. It's labeled B, I don't know, black, I don't know. And we have one labeled C. That's got to be the contrast, right? Yeah, that's the contrast. It would definitely be the contrast uh, right there. This is brightness, right? B is brightness. Yeah, there, there we go, that's brightness. <laughs> that's the kind of controls you had back in the day. You had volume, uh, brightness, and contrast. Now, there actually is another thing we can do with this knob here, you can you can turn this, and things you hear the it's getting more interference there. It's kind of like a fine tuning knob. So yeah, you just kind of like get it somewhere in the middle there. Uh, these are the actual channel knobs, which do us no good today because there is no analog signals, but we can play with them a little bit. Right now it's on channel 3, that is the, uh, you know, universal kind of, uh, you know, for the devices. That's uh, the signals for your Nintendo or whatever, <laughs> or VCR, you usually go to channel 3. Uh, you can usually set them to channel 4 if there's all, if there was, back in the day, if there was a channel 3 that was getting used, you would set it to channel 4. Channel 4 was never as good, though, because uh, even now, with no channel 3 or 4 or nothing like that, if we set it to channel 4, it, it's not quite as good, but, uh, channel 3 right now, we will go through, let's go through them. No, it's no, it does, it does us no good, but we'll go through them just to see. They all have so like a difference. They do look a little different, some of them. I mean, there is stuff going on with some of these things. They, I mean, they sold them for a reason. I mean, somebody's using them, I think. <laughs> I always did find this fascinating how some of them were so, so different looking. So that's U, which is the UHF. So UHF is this one. And we can go through all of them. UHF had notoriously bad signals uh, compared to VHF. So all your crappy channels went there. Your UPN, uh, your WBs, you know. Uh, that's uh, where they went. Your public televisions. <laughs> that one's very weird looking, huh? Definitely doing something on that channel. A lot of these are. Now a lot of these are completely the same, but it's, uh, I don't know. Like some of them are just completely different. So they're. I imagine they're doing something on this channel. You know, they're definitely doing something on this channel. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, that's how you got it there. So the story behind this um, television is uh, it used to sit in my parents' bedroom covered with a sheet. And uh, it just it was just dead. I guess I don't know what happened to it when when it died, but it had died at uh, some point. And I remember just 
peering at it over and over again, just dreaming. It was a dream to have a television in my own room. Um, this was still back in the day when, you know, most households only had two televisions, uh, you know, not too long before that, you know, you were lucky to have one, but, uh, you know, I, I think in the 80s and even in the early 90s, you know, most households you had two. You know, you had your main one in the living room, which was a bigger television set, and your parents had one in, you know, their bedroom or something. Maybe if you had a uh, den or something, maybe you'd even have a third one. But uh, you didn't. You didn't really. You didn't have uh, televisions in the children's rooms uh, back then. It would very soon change, and everybody, you know, there'd be a TV in every fucking room. But I, I would just, I just dreamt, you know, and you know, one of those things, uh, you know, on the Christmas wish list would be a TV or something. Then I, you know, I. Uh, and I, 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 uh, I had heard that my grandfather, my grandfather used to be like a uh, repair, TV repair man or something. So, you know, uh, I was like, why can't we, uh, you know, send this off to him and get him to, get him to uh, look at it. Uh, so that's actually what they did. Uh, I was uh, g given to my uh, grandfather to work on, and it took him forever. It felt like it felt like forever to actually, uh, like, years or something. I don't know how long it was, but that's how long it felt. <laughs> Eventually, you know, it, it, I got it, and it was a wonderful, wonderful thing uh, for me. And even though even though it was black and white, you know, I, I adored it, uh, just because it was in my room. I could uh, watch some shows in my room, and, uh, and the first thing that happened, actually, was the... Uh, old uh, Nintendo NES uh, got hooked up to it because by that point we had the Sega Genesis uh, hooked up in my parents room on a color TV uh, so uh, you know I the first thing I asked well, can we move can we get this girl over here I was always I was always into the old stuff from very from the very beginning as soon as we got a Sega Genesis I was like I want that Nintendo back <laughs> let's uh let's uh, show off the um, NES. The way I have it hooked up, it should be one of these things here, right? Appropriately. Kirby's Adventure. There's only like a couple games, you know, really, handful of games that we ended up actually buying, you know, during the time period uh, when the Nintendo was hooked up to this television. Uh, because obviously the Sega Genesis was a new hot thing, so, you know, this was just me primarily playing the old games I used to play on this one. You know, Kirby was a very beloved <laughs> character from day one on the Game Boy, really. And when they uh, put released this game in 1993, I think is what it was, yes. HAL Laboratories 1993, quite a late game for the Nintendo Entertainment System. It was one of those few games had to have, even though, uh, even though <laughs> it was Sega Genesis time by then. Oh, I, I haven't played this game in years, and you know what? I am kicking your ass. I think the final part of this boss is actually pretty hard, though, if I can remember. Oh, oh you got me, you bastard. So they would keep this in mind back in the day, hopefully, if you were lucky they would keep this in mind, is that televisions had an overscan area, uh, very pronounced on this television. See, it says Kirby and you see the light, you have no idea what this says, I assume it says score, you know, but uh, it's very, like, this is how it is, and actually, oh! Kirby even kind of disappears on this end because, you know, there's more to the television or there's more to the NES. That's what it's thinking. <laughs> this game is so awesome. <laughs> it is 
just love this game. <laughs> but uh, this this was my life back in the day. This was, and I had dreams. I would have dreams in black and white. They say that nobody. There was no reported cases of people dreaming in uh, black and white. You know, uh, maybe unless you were colorblind or something. But uh, for people that could see color. Uh, there was no reported cases of people dreaming in black and white until television. And originally, for the longest time, televisions only came in black and white varieties. So uh, people would be dreaming in black and white because this is, you know, they wanted to see what was on television. So this would fill their dreams and they would start dreaming in black and white. So, in the next couple decades or so, there's not going to be anybody that's dreaming in black and white anymore because there are no more uh, black and white devices but uh, this is what I had and I absolutely uh, I adored it for the longest time uh, and, eventually, and eventually I would get you know a color TV too in my room uh, uh, but that wasn't you know until like 1997 1998 or something and I had many many wonderful times playing the NES on this uh, television, and today I even have uh, today I even have you know uh, the Sega Genesis. I have all this stuff. Uh, anything, the way I hooked it up was exactly the same way I have it hooked up to the color TV. So <laughs> all this stuff uh, came. See now here, there is a mast that shows if you are at full sales or at half mast. Uh, it's cut out because of the overscan. Uh, you know, you know, on television you wouldn't notice this stuff because they always kept that in mind. Uh, you know, and you wouldn't be seeing menus and stuff really on television until like later on. But uh, yeah, it, was, it definitely made some games hard to play on this television because you couldn't see everything. Like even Mario Three, when you got the uh, extra items and stuff, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't, you could only make out a tiny bit of it on the screen. Oh, this is kind of cool. I've never seen the Sega Genesis on this uh, TV before. It's kind of cool. I'm enjoying it. How about some uh, Space Invaders here? This is quite appropriate for a black and white television, I have to say. <laughs> This is, uh, <laughs> I'm enjoying this. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, yeah, so this is, this is my uh, black and white television. Again, I think a lot of this interference has something to do with the way I have it all set up at the moment. Uh, I remember a little bit of that, but not quite to this degree. Gotcha. I can actually notice the uh, VIC-20 actually produces a lot of interference for this television. Which is very odd, but uh, yeah, that seems to be a thing. <laughs> it could very well be my converter, which uh, I want to show you all the converter. But this is the, the problem today with these is you know just because of the overscan. Like even my other television, which again has you know an overscan thing, uh, but it's a lot more pronounced on this particular uh, TV because you can't read anything over here. You can see the channel number, uh, but you can't see the actual title. It's just it's out of the range of this television. Uh, but yeah. Uh, but for the most part, you're not really going to notice any kind of an issue there, because you're normally you're not watching stuff with you know uh, labels and stuff in the middle there. You're just watching a picture, and what's get what's getting cropped out ain't really going to matter to you, uh, normally speaking. 
But uh, yeah, this is my black and white TV. A uh, General Electric name brand, General Electric. Uh, but I can't find any information on it. Let's just show you, let's get into it a little more. Let's show you how I actually went about uh, connecting this all up and getting it to work. In the prop in proper 4-3 aspect ratio and everything like that. So, looking at the back here, how are we going to get all of this done? Should you actually uh, want to do this yourself with an old uh, black and white TV? You know, black and white TVs uh, always had little little screws uh, for the UHF and the VHF. And you see, there's a couple layers missing here. I don't believe these are essential. I believe this is if you want. An outdoor antenna hooked directly up to the television. Uh, this black one here, uh, I don't know, it says here. Uh, the problem is I'm, a little, I'm missing a little bit of the damn sticker. If outdoor antenna is used, disconnect blank wire. Connect gray wire to screw one, black wire to screw two. This is if you want an outdoor antenna. Adjust pull for UHF. So. I guess this even this. This is for an outdoor antenna. We do not have an outdoor antenna. We do not need an outdoor antenna uh, anymore. Manufactured April 1976. So this would have been a very late uh, black and white television. We got a vertical hole switch. We have vertical size and we have the horizontal hole. So actually, we might be able to get more of the picture into into it all if we adjust the size. So we, we should be able, we should try that later on. But uh, if you want this sucker, I got some Adams Family stuff. I stuck, stuck all these stickers on it. I even have a Yankees. What the hell is I thinking Yankees? <laughs> but uh, yeah, here's the General Electric model XB3160BK. Chassis 15XB. So I guess they would have put different models in the same box. That is very strange to me, but apparently that was a thing. So, uh, in order to get this all uh, modern, uh, this sucker here is absolutely necessary. Uh, same thing here. Uh, it's called a matching box. I guess matching box uh, 75 to 300 uh, here's another one this one just says MT 75 drop shop property of cable TV uh oh <laughs> property of cable TV company do not remove oops <laughs> I think I'll actually uh, connect this one up uh, just to see if it helps any of that interference out at all uh, might as well just. This is the one that's always been connected to it, though it looks nicer. But uh, this one might actually be better. You never know. But uh, yeah, you definitely you need this because you're not going to find anything these days that have. Because um, you're not going to find anything these days that have the uh, the leads like this, you know. So uh, uh, we're going to have to convert it to an RF signal. I, well, it's all RF, but. Gonna have to convert it to a coaxial coaxial end. And actually, at this point, should you just want to say, you know, hook up your Nintendo or something? Well, we could do that now. Here is uh, an original Nintendo RF switch. Uh, I even have a Sega Genesis one. <laughs> These suckers. Yeah, these, these suckers were not used that much back in the day, even. Because for the color TV, we quickly switched to uh, RCA inputs, which is what I use uh, to this day. You know, but we could easily, at this point, you know, take the RF switch, you know, hook it up to this, and hook the other end... This is for your antenna, so this is, you know, so you could still have your antenna, which would normally be going into this. Uh, you could still have uh, the Nintendo and the antenna all hooked up at the same time. And here is, at the other end, we have a, a standard RCA jack, but this is for the RF of the Nintendo Entertainment uh, System. If you want to see that real quick, 
right up. Let's hook it up right to. I can see if this one's any good, I guess, if we hook it up directly to the uh, Nintendo via RF. So now I have it hooked up to the Nintendo. Let's see if it actually works. And it very much does. And I, yeah, I might see like a tiny bit of interference here and there, uh, but uh, I don't think it's the cable, obviously. <laughs> it's probably uh, my uh, RF box. Uh, that is causing all that interference because it looks a lot better. I like this, doesn't it? Nice! So, I, it, the Nintendo has not been hooked up via RF in uh, many, 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 many moons, so it's actually, that's cool. <laughs> uh, cool to see that all this stuff still works in there. <laughs> Still probably better quality uh, to have it hooked up via RCA and going through all those switch boxes. Even if it does have those uh, little sparks every once in a while, assuming I could get that fixed, it would still it would be a better quality overall, I would think, than uh, having it directly to the RF on the Nintendo. But uh, there you have it. Uh, without any special boxes or anything, just... Uh, just uh, via this one cable, uh, plus you know a Nintendo or a Sega RF modulator uh, hooked up to the device, you know, just by that we have uh, a sys old system hooked up to it, uh, looking nice. So uh, there you go. That's one possibility. Let's continue on though. So what next in our quest to make this sucker modern? Well. We're going to need uh, one of these. Uh, this is a tuner, a digital TV converter. If you would have uh, sent in a card to the uh, government, you could have asked for a one or two of these uh, devices like this. This is a very nice one. Actually, it's much nicer than the one I actually have connected to my color TV. I should probably switch this. <laughs> But yeah, um, this is the proper way to go about uh, getting television signals onto this sucker because this is still uh, in 4.3. Uh, that's the uh, overall standard. Still to this day, uh, you know, even cable and stuff, you know, uh, standard analog. Unless you have HD cable, you know, your regular cable box, which most people are still paying for regular cable, you can stretch it all you want. It's still uh, in 4.3. But yeah, this is the proper way to go about, especially for these old televisions, is to get a device uh, like this. Which here, we can put it in the antenna here. Apparently there's a smart antenna. And here is the RF. You know, we hit that and we can connect all of these suckers together. Now you get an RF, you get, you get some RF cables here. You know, you hook them up. TV out, hook one up there, you hook one up here, and uh, you know, you will have a signal uh, based on this. The only thing I hate about all of these is none of them have a fucking tuner. There's no channel changing on the damn device itself. You have to have the remote. It's so asinine. Asinine. You got know, a power button. What's the use of a power button without the channel changing? Anyway, stupid, stupid, stupid. But uh, even this, you know, it would still probably be better to hook it up via RCA video uh, and stuff like that. Uh, but you have that option. That's all you need if uh, all you want is some uh, television on it. It's a device like this, uh, and it will look proper. If things will look correct like they should in the proper 4-3 aspect ratio and a coax cable connected to one of these devices up to the television you know and you're all set you can even use a device like this you can hook this up to the TV and we can hook this one you can hook this one up to this and you know there you go 
we can have, uh, you know, the Sega Genesis or Nintendo or whatever. It can, I think up to the PlayStation era, they still use these suckers. So, you know, all that stuff. Uh, you can have both, you know, your uh, television as well as one single console hooked up via that. But we know we're crazy, aren't we? We're nuts. So uh, we need another device. Uh, but in order to connect it to my current setup, which is what I have, so I can have the Sega Genesis and the Nintendo and the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64, all this stuff hooked up together to one device, you know, while having the television, I need a device like this. And this is an RF modulator. Uh, I imagine this is what is causing my interference, though, so there's probably you know, devices that are better than others uh, when it comes to that. But this, it's very simple on the front. All you have, you can ch select channel 4, you can select channel 3. Uh, you're you're going to be wanting to check select channel 3. I'm sure that's going to get you the best signal. And on the back, uh, even this one, you can have your normal antenna leads as well. But the thing that interests me is here. We have the RCAs here. Video in. But this is what you need. You need something like this. This will convert an RCA uh, to this. Uh, we just hook that to the television one. And we hook the other end. Hook that other end up to the TV via this switch. That is how I am getting everything. Uh, and maybe we can just make out. Yes, there, there, there are uh, my RCA cables. Which go up to this. Uh, and the uh, these RCA cables are connected uh, to a switch box. Actually, here is my uh, setup for uh, my switch box. And this is for a television. I have an antenna here for the tel for the uh, box itself. But below here, this is a uh, a switch, a video switch. Uh, so I can have many consoles and television stuff all together at once. Over here, we have our uh, have a Super Nintendo which is going to be hooked up all this stuff I turn it on you know it's you know a clip you know it's a it's a switch of this sucker or the VCR there's the Nintendo itself and I think the Commodore 64 and stuff are hooked up to the VCR which you know change the channel on the VCR and that will be dealt with but you know here here's the monstrosity in the back all of these cables are switched up so all this stuff can go on to my uh, Montgomery Ward uh, color television at once and uh, via via those cables there go into this switch box over to this coax into the black and white TV you know I imagine if most most people wouldn't need all of this extravaganza uh, most people would do just fine with uh, the uh, RF switch, you know, from Sega or Nintendo, uh, plus a box like this for your television and an antenna and everything. But uh, this is how I'm doing it. So, you know, just an example if you want to get crazy. <laughs> All right, so who wants to take it apart? Uh, there's absolutely no reason to do so. But, uh, why not? We don't make any sense here. Hopefully we do not get electrocuted in the process, but you never know with a CRT. Oh, of course, I can't fucking fit the damn thing. I don't know. I think
think this must have to come off. I think it's coming off. So back cover is kind of its own separate entity altogether. With the antenna coming in here. XB chassis. Got a wiring diagram. You see something about the audio there. Back when uh, they uh, let you kind of figure it all out. I mean, you were meant to take it to a TV repair man, but uh, you know, back when it wasn't all a trade secret. <laughs> it's kind of cool. A power plug just kind of has an end like this and just kind of goes in the right there there really isn't a whole hell of a lot we can do in here some of, some of it's a little dusty so I suppose we'll spray it out Take you on the grand tour here. Now this looks wrong here. This is there's supposed to be a uh, piece of rubber, and you can kind of see the outline of it there uh, to protect uh, this wire here. This wire you don't want to touch. This wire uh, you won't die, but you're not going to have a good time. Uh, you're supposed to. Uh, Get a screwdriver and uh, hit that to a ground before you actually work on a CRT. As long as you don't touch it though, you're fine. <laughs> so here we can see the uh, circuit board a little bit. Way back there you can see the speaker. One single mono speaker. Right up in the front there you can see the fuse. Uh, that is the number one culprit. If a CRT is going is gone bad, your number one culprit is probably the fuse. Yet people are willing to trash a CRT when all you needed to replace was the goddamn fuse. You're this afraid. You're that afraid of the damn thing. Am I dying? I'm not dead. No, I'm not dead. And I'm not even going to the trouble of uh, you know messing with that thing and you know grounding it. It's perfectly safe. As long as you don't touch what you're not supposed to touch. But, uh, yeah. Bit of a warning label. Danger! Implosion hazard. Fragile glass picture, too. Is dangerous to service. Refer. Servicing to qualified personnel. General Electric uh, sticker there. Uh, there's the uh, tuner. I mean, there really isn't too much too much here for you guys there's nothing to touch because the thing thing works fine but uh, there's the uh, basic overview of it all remember my written review shot 97 retro dot blogspot dot com uh, will have uh, nice pictures for you all close-ups of the back cover
One curious thing of note is this extra adjusting switch here. It has under it abbreviated RFAGC. There is no hole in the uh, casing to adjust this one, so I, I imagine you're not supposed to fuck with it. Only the uh, service people are supposed to fuck with it. Now, I've actually figured out what this button does. It's in the name. It says RF there. <laughs> it's actually uh, kind of fine-tuning for the RF uh, signal. I've got it on right now. Uh, I absolutely adore this little power plug feature they have. So I'm going to show you all what this RF uh, switch in the back does. Here's at one extreme. There's at the other extreme. Just fine tunes your RF signal here. Um, here as you see it now is actually close to what it would have looked like over broadcast television analog back in the day. Uh, I'm com I, I realize I'm complaining about like this, you know, occasional like static kind of stuff you see, and I forget that back in the day over analog television, this this is what it would have looked like. Because when you're broadcasting from an antenna in a city and it's going off, you know, it's everything and anything is gonna inter slightly interfere with it. The good thing about analog was you could pick it up. You could be very, very far away and you could pick it up. Whereas the good thing about digital is that as long as the signal is just powerful enough to get all the signal, it will look crystal clear. I'm actually a fan of the over-broadcast uh, digital realm. Now, I just wish the government wouldn't have forced it down everybody's throat. It should have just happened. Uh, much like I hate the fact that the government uh, tried to force us to get rid of these wonderful things. Uh, but as you can see, I don't care what the government says. <laughs> But basically, that's all the the RF thing is just a fine tuning um, for the signal. So uh, get it somewhere in the middle where it looks nice to you. But you do have to have the um, television open to actually adjust it. Uh, but nice, nice that they have the power cord that can actually come out of the uh, back cover and uh, connect directly to it. Anyway, let's go back to the video. So let's play with the uh, settings in the back here. So this one uh, brings it to the left and the right. There's the horizontal hold. The vertical hold. I want to say the thing that was wrong with this TV was something with the damn hold. Uh, I swear, I remember t when, he, when I wanted it to be fixed, if you powered it up, this is what would happen. It was just like in this kind of position. I, I doubt it was as simple as, you know, just touching the button, but. Uh, Something seemed to be wrong with the hole at the time. You just uh, fine tune it until it uh, stops. The other thing is the size. Holy crap. Wide screen. Not really. Uh, stretched. It's supposed to be in 4 or 3. I wonder. I bet we can fine tune this. <sighs> 
Now, prior, we couldn't even read the show here. Now, if we go like that, we can absolutely read it, but, uh, yeah, we just tune it to, uh, just gets out of the reach right about there. Maybe a little more than that. There we go. We're still missing on the absolute left. Let's see if we can uh, mess with the hold here. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Pretty much. <laughs> so all this time, back in the day, I couldn't see some of these NES games, <laughs> the menus and shit. All I had to do was mess with the uh, hold and the damn vertical size and stuff, and uh, there it is. I can actually see uh, what's on the t what's on the title screen now. I love Lucy. Maybe I can show you this a little more. This fine tuning mechanism. It's like a it's like a focusing thing. And the more you take it out, the blurrier everything gets. And eventually, it's audio problems too. You turn it to the right, it focuses it more. But it also gets more interference. I can see a hell of a lot more you know, interference now. It's super focused and eventually it goes out of focus. So you want to put it somewhere in there where you can read everything. Where it looks good but you don't got too much uh, interference going on. And I'd say that's about perfect there. And there's nothing like watching an old black and white show on a real black and white television. So I hope everybody has enjoyed this look at uh, my black and white television from General Electric. Hope you had a good time. Retro Goodness episode. Take a look at some more of them. Take a look at some other videos. Subscribe if you want to. I'm out of here. Goodbye.
And from all of us here, happy painting, and God bless. To order a 256-page book of Bob's 60 favorite paintings or his detailed three-hour workshop DVD, 